Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Match Chats and today we're going to be talking about something, uh, a new HTO project called Join HD and to do so we've got the wonderful, well we've got joined by two doctors, so we've got Dr. Rebecca Mason and we've got Dr. Lauren Byrne who are both involved in HDO and Join HD. Um, so if you'd, which one would like to introduce yourselves first? I'll go first. <laughs> go for it. Okay, um, so hi everyone, I'm Rebecca, um, I'm 32 and I live in Sheffield in the UK. Um, so my background is um, sort of in science and biology, so I've got um, a human biology degree and then a PhD in biochemistry, which was um, on the topic of Parkinson's disease research. Um, then after that, in 2017, I started working in Huntington's disease. So I joined um, my local hospital, Sheffield Children's Hospital, working in their clinical research department. Um, and then my time was split between um, I managed a portfolio of rare genetic disease in children studies and then adult Huntington's disease studies. So um, I was site coordinator for the Enroll HD study there and then moved on to coordinating um, the Roche Generation HD1 drug trial when that started in 2019. So I did that um, for a couple of years and then joined HDO earlier this year, where I'm coordinator for the project that we're going to be talking about today, the Join HD registry. Thank you, Rebecca. Sorry. Hi everybody, I'm Lauren Byrne. I am a Huntington disease researcher at UCL. I am 29 and based in London, um, but I'm originally from Northern Ireland. I am also from a family that are impacted by Huntington's disease. My dad has Huntington's disease, as do several members of my family. So I'm very personally invested. Um, I have a biology background and uh, decided to try getting into Huntington's disease research. And that's why I moved to UCL to try and get with get into Sarah DeBreezy's lab. Um, and that's where I met my current supervisor, Ed Wilde. And I was lucky to do a PhD with him, which is based on um, what we call biomarkers for Huntington's disease and trying to measure things in blood and spinal fluid. Uh, that could help us uh, design trials and uh, detect earlier signs of Huntington's disease uh, or help with monitoring it when, when we have symptoms or when we have treatments in the future. Um, and I got involved in, with HDO uh, about two years ago, nearly two years ago. Um, I um, met BJ and, and the crew um, and he invited me to join the board of trustees um, and since joining we've kind of restructured how HDO is organised and I helped set up a research committee with Dr Bronnie and um, I'm sure a lot of people know um, and I've been lucky to kind of take over um, the setup of this this joint HD initiative for juvenile onset Huntington disease patients um, I have recently been appointed the chief investigator of the study, which means I am responsible for its overall conduct, um, research conduct and, and how things are managed. Um, and I work very closely with, with Rebecca and we were really happy to get her on board. As you can hear, she's very experienced and is bringing um, so much to the HCO and this initiative. Thank you, doctors. Um, so we've been using the name then. Uh, so what what is Join HD? Can you tell us what it is? Break it down. Maybe should I go first this time? <laughs> <laughs> um, so Join HD stands for the Juvenile Onset Initiative for Huntington's Disease, and it is our name for our the first global registry for patients and family members or patients and caregivers of juvenile onset Huntington's disease. Um, our registry is basically um, where patients and family members can sign up and kind of basically say, hey, I'm here. Um, and that is it at the kind of fundamental level. Um, and we're hoping to build on it to start taking, really, or, um, getting 
a lot of important information on juvenile onset Huntington's disease that hasn't really been done before. Um, and we hope to help uh, fa facilitate more research in this disease because at the minute it's been a bit neglected. Rebecca, would you like to add anything to that? Um, yeah, so I'll talk a little bit about the, the practicalities of it. Um, so Join HD, it's going to be an online registry. Um, so it's going to be open in all the different countries um, and families impacted by JOHD will be able to go on, go online to pre-register. Um, then they'll have, I'll get in contact, send a bit of information through and we'll have a phone call, a video call to um, get you set up on the study and then they'll self-enroll online and there'll be questionnaires on there um, for them to give us give us their information. Um, so patient registries, I think they're, they're important for um, all diseases, but particularly rare disease. So I think the some of the struggles that Laura mentioned, um, slow progress on juvenile onset Huntington's disease, it's caused by um, small, really small patient numbers and then just a lack of information. So patient registries are really important, particularly for rare diseases, to, to try and overcome some of those problems. So we're really keen to get it up and running and to be as big and collect as much information as possible um, to try and help help research. Mm. And you said, um, Lauren, you mentioned that it was the first verbal registry for juvenile Huntington's. Um, so why create this then? Why is it important to do this? Well, firstly, when I say first, um, other studies like Enroll HD and Registry, which are, are studies that have been open to all of HD. So some JOHD participants will have been involved in those studies, but this is the first devoted to, to juvenile onset and it's global. So the fact that it is online and remote, as Rebecca just said, will allow people from all over the globe to be able to sign up if they can get access to a computer or a, a phone that has internet access. So that will hopefully allow us to really reach much more people that have ever been reached before. Because what we know from our work um, at HCO with JOHG patients, our network through social media and support groups, um, we know that we can reach people in a different way that clinics can. Um, and we're not doing this, you know, on our own. We're doing this with all these other organisations, um, including the other family associations like HDSA, um, the European Huntington's Association and their, the subsequent associations in those countries. We are working with uh, professional networks like the European Huntington's Disease Network and Huntington's Study Group and CHGI and we are trying to maximise the global network to really get the numbers up and why that's important as Rebecca mentioned to do research um, and to really understand a disease which is as complex and varied as juvenile onset Huntington's disease. I don't think any patient is the same. They all have their own unique set of symptoms. But if we can get bigger numbers, we can start to, to understand patterns and things that might be useful to measure. And having things to measure is important for being able to test drugs and to be able to sign people up into trials and to be able to make sure um, companies think about doing trials in juvenile onset HD because at the minute, it's very focused on people that are over 18 and the standard onset, adult onset HD, and we don't want JOHD to be forgotten about. Anything to add, Rebecca? No, don't think so. Okay. Um, yeah, Lauren covered a lot there. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, so you've kind of gone over my next question a little bit as well there, Lauren, was about the goals of, of joint HD. Um, but can you just kind of kind of succinctly talk about what the main goals are. Go back and can kind of give the yeah. yeah, that's fine. So so yeah, Lauren did touch on them, but um so like in summary, the main goal, so first of all is just locating these families. So we want to to get as many 
um, people affected by JOHD as possible signed up so that we, we know where they are. We've got an idea of numbers. Um, so that's the main aim. Um, then subsequent aims are obviously increasing understanding. So so the question is that people will be filling in. All that information will help us understand more about the disease and, and how it progresses. And as Laura mentioned to you, um, to get some treatment, you need to you need to know if they're working or not. So you need to know what would happen normally. So it's going to be really important from that side of things. Um, and then a third big aim, what we really hope for the future is to facilitate future research. So once we've got this established and hopefully it will be a big successful registry then we've got a pool of participants and um, so they'll have the option to say whether they'd be happy to be contacted for future research and then any other researchers scientists who are interested in doing research on JOHD they can come to us and we can hopefully provide the participants for them so I'd that's, say that's the main names. that's a very important point as well because I think Talk, going back to uh, raw HD, which we talked about before there, uh, which is for all families, and not just juvenile, but um, that, you know, that's made a lot of progress for HD families because it's able to kind of, you know, bring people to together and get that research just, you know, in one place. It makes it a lot easier to, to participate in the research. Um, so, yeah, really important. Um, so you've kind of talked on it a little bit, Rebecca, about, but how do people take part in join HD? Okay, so um, so right now we've got pre-registration open for join HD. So people are able to pre-register if they're interested, um, and they can do that by going on the HDO website. And if you go to the there's a page about join HD, and the link is there to pre-register. Um, you could also contact me. So uh, my email is Rebecca at HDO. Org. So if you want any more information or a chat, or I can just send you the link if you can't be bothered to go look at yourself. Um, so you can contact me in that way. And you also might see links in various places like Facebook and things like that where you can sign up as well. But if you actively want to go look in, I'd say those two things, email me or go on the HDO website. And at the moment, it's just it's just a online uh, participation. Is that right, Lauren? Yeah, and I think there's a bit there's a big thing for us, and and what we're we're trying to make this as accessible to families, and we know how hard it is to deal with HD as it is, but juvenile onset HD has even more um, burden on families, and we don't want this to be an extra burden. We want this to be as easy as possible, and we're we're working with the community. We've got we've got a. Um, we're talking to some families this afternoon to get some feedback on what we're doing and we really want to get continued. This should be a patient-led initiative rather than um, and something for the community rather than um, us dictating what it should be. And that, that's, I think, been something strong that both of us and, and our, anybody involved in the initiative is, is thinking about. Um, we um, think that... By having it online and people self enroll, that will maximise the number of people that can sign up. And and at this stage, we're making a very low um, low burden and low commitment. So it, they just have to sign up. There will be a call with Rebecca um, in between getting the link to the main study um, or the main registry itself, because uh, I think Rebecca is going to have a call with each person that does the pre-registration and then you'll have a chance to talk to Rebecca and ask any questions about the information that we're going to send out. Um, she'll just check that you're eligible and um, yeah, and then answer any of the questions that people have about before they, they actually sign up and give their information and give, start giving information to the, the initiative itself. Um, the pre-registration is just filling out information like your contact details so we can get back in touch with you and none of your identifiable information would be linked it would be on the the research platform itself uh we're keeping that all separate so that is all protected and um that's why that we're we've split it into those two stages and rebecca we've talked a bit uh, aside from 
being from JHC family, what is the criteria for joining? Yes, yeah, so so that's that's mainly it at the moment. So we're keeping it as broad as possible because we know um, it, different countries might have slightly different ways of doing things. So we didn't want to make it you had to have, say, a specific di diagnosis from a genetic test or we didn't want to put any extra criteria on at this stage so to be eligible you have to either be someone diagnosed with JOHD or the caregiver of someone with JOHD or previous caregivers of people with JOHD as well so they're the three categories of people that we're hoping to um, get information from. One thing to consider um, is that some of the younger JOHD patients um, may not be as aware of their own disease. So if they're going to actively participate as an individual themselves, they need to be aware of their, that they have juvenile onset Huntington's disease. So that's the only kind of requirement. Um, it's okay for a caregiver to, to fit, give information about their, their child that has juvenile onset, but for them, to actively be part themselves and, and fill out things for themselves with help with help from their caregiver, they need to be aware of their disease. But that doesn't mean that the caregiver can't participate on their behalf if they don't if they're not ready for that conversation yet. And in terms of um, no, it doesn't matter where you're from or what language you mm -hmm. speak, you can you can participate. Is that the message? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the plan is that we're, we're starting everything in English and um, HDO has a band of translator that are going to help us that we're, we're starting to um, translate everything, all the materials that we have into um, as many languages as we can. But we obviously know that we're, we're not going to be able to do every language across the world. We're going to use local people. Local, our local connections in those areas to, to maybe help people that don't have as much access to this but that it's going to take a bit of time to kind of roll this out at the minute it's just me and Rebe Rebecca isn't even full-time and she's doing an amazing job to get this this going and um but that is the plan the, yeah. okay quite a most of anything is there anything that we've missed glaringly that you'd like to add yes yeah, so we were gonna maybe we can mention that there's already a plan to kind of so we're doing this in in stages and stage one as we say is very minimal it's just finding people and asking them a bit about their information or their their connection to the community and and we're doing that for a number of reasons um one to connect or make sure people have connections with um healthcare providers that are within their area who can provide that link up um, and also if they want to be connected with other individuals with JHD, you know, for peer support. Um, so all that can be included. Um, and then the later stages is when the stage two is where we're going to start asking about questions about the disease itself and how people experience it. So we'll get experience, the experience from the person who has juvenile onset Huntington's disease, as well as how the caregiver experiences their disease as well. And then by stage three, which might be a few years down the line, but we're planning to have some expert clinicians who are, have already signed up to help us out with this, who are experts in juvenile onset Huntington's, and they will do a clinician-led interview um, for each of the participants. So we haven't finalised what is going to be in those questions and what information we're going to take, but that's where we're going and there may be more we're, we're hoping to make this bigger and we're working on getting more people to support it more sponsors funding um yeah do I, is there anything else Rebecca no nothing I can think of I think that's an important point there because from what I've seen so far we even we haven't officially launched yet we're just in the pre-registration phase but and what we've seen is that there's actually quite a lot of interest from the pharmaceutical companies in what we're doing here. And that's very good news for the juvenile HD families because that's exactly what we want. We want people to say, okay, what's going on here? Can we, you know, what's going on? How can we get involved? And that's only going to speed things up for the juvenile HD. So we definitely want to do that. Yeah, really and from the, from the talks that we're having with Pharma and Talman about the study, there, there's a lot of interest and 
I think previously Farmer will have avoided um, getting involved because you know they, as we said, it's really important having these tools and understand the disease before you can actually run a trial in it. And you know it's not up to the farmer companies to necessarily get that information. So it's a part. It's it, it might need us to kind of step up and, and do that. So that's where HCO is trying to come in and, and really expedite that. Um, we and we're 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 keeping this kind of a, a mutual effort with the professional community as well as the families to see what we can get out of it. My own research is going to move into juvenile onset outside of HCO as well, um, hopefully, if I get funded. But um, uh, we're excited about the possibilities and, um, and we want to hear from families and, and make this important for them and, and their, get their needs and voices heard as well. Um, I do have one last question and maybe Rebecca can answer. But, um, when we're in the pre-registration phase, so when are we hoping to, to kind of go live with, with Join HD? Okay. Um, the short answer would be as soon as possible. <laughs> we're very close. Um, okay. Just ironing out a few issues with the with the online side of it, with the website that people will go on. But yeah, we're. I think Lauren would agree we're very, very close now. Very, very <laughs> close. <laughs> <laughs> I hope by the end of the year <laughs> definitely we're, we're aiming for november but um i, I don't we don't want to promise anything um and it's just like everything this we have a small team and we have we don't have complete control over the platform we have to get other people to wait on them to help us with fixes but we hope yeah. it will be soon <laughs> so super okay do you have anything else to add, either of you? Um, I don't think so. The only other thing I was going to mention was our scientific oversight committee, but it's a bit boring. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I was just going to say people. that we, we, we set up um, a scientific oversight committee with experts in the field, and a scientific oversight committee are really important to help us build the strategy and make sure everything that we're doing is scientifically sound and make sure that the information that we're getting is, you know, above board. And um, so we have uh, a few people in the field, Martha Nantz, um, Helen Sartini from the HDA in England and Wales, um, Leon Durr, who's a paediatric uh, movement disorder specialist. Um, and Jean Marc Burgundy, who is uh, head of the Swiss um, Center in um, the HD Center in Switzerland, and uh, is big in the European Huntington's Disease Associate or Network. Um, and we have Oliver Quarrel, who um, has led a lot of the genetic studies in juvenile onset in Sheffield, and oh and Bonnie and ourselves. Yeah. Strong team. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that's it's, you know, not the fun side, but... <laughs> no, but it's, 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 really good it's, very, it's just as important as the rest, so it's, it's absolutely worth yeah. it. Yeah. And I think the main thing to say is that the, these professionals are, are super keen to work with us and are really like, delighted that this initiative has been set up because it hasn't, hasn't been there and there's been a gap in the field and, and we want to fill it. Okay, well, thank you, doctors. I appreciate that. Um, and what I will do now is I will put on uh, the Join HD kind of uh, website link and I'll put on uh, contact details for Rebecca's email as well. So if anyone's kind of watching this um, and thinking, uh, yeah, I'd like to know more about that, please contact Rebecca on the email that you'll see here. Um, but thank you, folks. We appreciate that. Take care, Rebecca. Take care, Lauren. Enjoy that Thank sunshine, Lauren. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye, folks.